This is, this is not an encouraging topic because this is a, a terrible topic to talk about because we're going to be talking about the destruction of the planet Earth. Not the planet per se, but the judgment of God. This is the time that God will unleash His fury and His anger uh, upon the Earth. So if you think that the Great Tribulation is already terrible, it's, it's a boy compared to uh, the day of the Lord. And that will be uh, under the sixth seal. So turn with me in Revelation chapter 6. Praise the Lord. And we will start reading in verse 12. I read, the sixth seal may be uh, in number six in terms of number. And the seventh seal is... Uh, way ahead if you think if you look about the numerical order but in terms of all of respect to fulfillment the seventh seal will be fulfilled ahead of the sixth seal okay so remember that the seventh seal will be fulfilled ahead of the sixth seal because the seventh seal will be fulfilled in our day while the sixth seal will be fulfilled, is, let me put it this way. The seventh seal will be fulfilled before the coming of the Lord, before the rapture. That the sixth seal will be fulfilled when Christ returns as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So th those are the difference. Okay, so the, 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 the seventh seal is uh, attached to the rapture. The sixth seal is attached to the second coming of Jesus. Okay, so I hope you, you see the difference. So the seventh seal will be fulfilled ahead of the sixth seal. Okay, but in numerical order, of course, number six is always ahead of number seven. But in terms of chronology, the seventh seal will, will come first before the sixth seal. I hope it's clear. So turn with me in Revelation. Okay. There you go. Revelation 6, verse 12. <clears throat> After this, I look. When he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake. Okay. There was a great earthquake. If you, if you want me to describe the great earthquake, uh, it, it's like making the earth reeling to and fro like a drum bird. Turn with me in Isaiah 24 verse 14 is going to be because the earth will be likened unto a drum bird reeling to and fro. Uh, Isaiah 24 verse 20 so we'll take it slow brothers and sisters, because we're going to be including the seven vials with this. Isaiah 24, verse 20. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall totter like a hot. Its transgression its, its transgression shall be heavy upon it will fall and not rise again. When? When will it happen? It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord will punish on the high the host of exalted ones on the earth, the kings of the earth. So this will happen on the day of the Lord. The dreadful day of the Lord. So imagine the earth like a drunkard, the earth really to and fro. Uh, how strong is this earthquake? This earthquake is something that has never happened before. So you don't want to be around when it, when it happened. So let's go back to Revelation 6, verse 12. 
when I, when he opened the sixth seal, behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth. Now remember now, it's not the literal stars, because stars are bigger than the earth in size. So what stars is the Bible talking about? Most likely asteroids, meteors, that can cause tidal waves and such like. Here in the, uh, the moon become, uh, the sun became black. It's almost like there is an eclipse, okay? A sackcloth of hair and the moon became like blood. Those are metaphorical symbolism of the day of the Lord. Because you can see and read the same expression in Joel chapter 2. When you know the sun turning black and the moon becoming like blood. Here in Joel chapter 2 verse 30 and 31. I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. That is an expression of uh, the day of the Lord, the dreadful day of the Lord, the dreadful, terrible day of the Lord. When God will unleash his judgment upon the earth. So it's not very encouraging, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. So uh, the stars, the moon, the sun, these are heavenly bodies, okay, that will react, okay, when the day of vengeance happen. How it will be, brothers and sisters, Hey, if you have tidal waves, if you have great earthquake, it really changes the balance of nature. Okay? Uh, the entire planet Earth will be really disturbed. And the book of Isaiah described it as a drunkard reeling to and fro. My God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it's really terrible today. It's, it's, it's beyond description. No words is enough to even describe the uh, how terrible that they will be. Okay? And then it says in verse 30, okay. seal, And the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. So you will have tsunami, you will have volcanic eruption, you will have earthquakes, those are the things. And then you will have hail falling from heaven, 50 kilos each. Oh. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, look at the look at the the outcome, the aftermath. Received it as a scroll. You know, you know, you know the word receded is like this. Like the sky is like this. Receded like a scroll. Scroll. It's like the sky was folded, you know, it's, it's almost like it's being folded because of the effect of this uh, catastrophe, yeah. brothers and sisters, okay? Every mountain and island was moved out of its place, my God. <laughs> so even the islands were moved, mountains were moved, uh, you know, volcanic eruption and stuff like that. If you were here during the eruption of Mount Pinatubo, it's almost like the end of the world. The sky was black because it's covered by ashes coming from the volcano. So that is also one, one way of making the sun turning into black. Because if it's covered by ashes, you know, when volcano erupts, brothers and sisters, that's terrible. I, you know, my wife was telling me people were running to Manila, the, 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 the NLX highway was filled with people and everyone was scaring and they were running for their lives. Brothers and sisters, hallelujah. So it's it's really terrible. 
And the kings of the earth, and the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slaves, every every man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains. They were trying to find a place of refuge, but there is none. Because this is the day of the Lord. Hallelujah. And said to the mountains, rocks and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. You know the, the symbol of mountain? Mountain symbolizes government. You can read that in Isaiah chapter 2 verse 2. The mountain of the Lord shall be on top of the mountain. Okay, the government of the Lord will be on top of every government. So mountain actually symbolizes government. If you read in Daniel chapter 2, the stone that destroyed the image filled the whole earth. And that is a description of the kingdom of Christ that will uh, cover the whole earth. Okay, so mountains uh, being asked by these people to fall upon them is they are asking human and governmental protection thinking that it has ability to cover them to shield them and to protect them from him who is coming brothers and sisters and whose wrath has arrived brothers and sisters hallelujah you can read also the same in revelation chapter one the description is is something okay All right. Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him. Even they who pierce him, and all the tribes of the earth will burn. They will burn because of him, even so. Amen. Okay, those that are not redeemed will burn. They're not excited. When the Lord comes, only the redeemed are excited. The sinners, they don't like it. <laughs> because it destroys their castles in the sand. It destroys their dreams, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. So let's read again in Revelation 6, verse 6, 7, 17. Okay, these people said to the mountains, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come. So if God withhold his anger upon humanity for centuries and for thousands of years, and now he will unleash it at this very particular moment, imagine how terrible it could be, brothers and sisters. For the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand. So God is a merciful God, but God is also a God of wrath. And wrath is not just because God is angry. Wrath is God's justice. He has given man ample time. He has given man enough time to consider his ways. And yet they turn their backs uh, from the Lord. And therefore the time will end. And that opportunity to repent will be over. And then God will eventually pour out his wrath and judgment upon the earth. It's different from the lake of fire. Okay? The lake of fire is different. So, when people tell you that mm -hmm. there is a bright future that awaits humanity, well, I beg to disagree. The Bible, the only bright future that awaits humanity is the millennium. That's all. Other than that, what awaits humanity is judgment. That's what the Bible says. You may not like what I'm saying. It may destroy your dreams or human emotions, but I don't care. And regardless of what people say, that's what the Bible says. The future is not good for those that are not saved. I'm sorry to say that. Okay? If you die unsaved, the lake of fire awaits you. If you are alive until this day, you're going to drink the wrath of God. So where will you go? <laughs> it's double jeopardy. If you stay alive until this time, my God, you're going to drink the wrath of God. If you're dead without being saved, you're going to end up in the lake of fire. See? So uh, the future is not bright 
for those that are not saved. Okay, and, and, and we're not we're not uh, we're not happy. In Malachi chapter four, this is the end time verse. But uh, uh, let's see. Behold, I will send to Elijah. When? Before the coming of the great, that's the first coming, and dreadful day of the Lord. So there will be two Elijahs coming before two events will happen. The great day of the Lord speaks of his first coming, and the first Elijah has already alive. Ah, has already arrived, rather. And that was John the Baptist. The great day of the Lord speaks of the second coming of Jesus. And Another Elijah was sent to Foran, the second cat of the Lord, the person of Brother Banam. And how long had he been had he been dead? More than fifty years. Brother Banam is dead for more than fifty years. Brothers and sisters. So how long do you think? Uh, how long do you think uh, uh, the time for the Gentile age to end? And this is what you need to know. Many that used to follow Barabana have started doubting him being the prophet. Many that first believed him to be the Elijah started doubting whether he really was the Elijah that is to come. So the Lord allowed this thing to linger on to test on whether you're following this message just because you want to follow it because you feel good about it or you're following a crowd or jumping into the bandwagon, you're not going to last. If you be become a message delivered, it has to be a revelation. There is no other way for you to stick and survive all the trials and all the things that the devil will throw at you without divine revelation of what this message is all about I am sorry to tell you, my brothers and sisters, you will not last. So it takes a revelation. This has to be personally revealed to you. Not because I say so, but it has to be unveiled. It's almost like God removes a veil in your mind and removes a veil in your heart, allowing you to see something that is hidden to the world, even to the intellectual religious world. Okay, because without a full revelation, uh, you will probably along the way be thrown out of the wayside. I am sorry to say, because after many years of being in this message, I have seen people, you know, they started out good. You know, after a while there, they feel dry and they started getting cold and then they, they fall on the wayside. Why? Or they will accept other message. Why? Because in the beginning, it was not a revelation. So, uh, when you say that mm, this is it, you have to be tested. You will be definitely be tested. Uh, so be prepared. Imagine our little group in, in, in Switzerland. It's a small group. But the devil is already attacking it with, you know, trying to sow some, some division or this or that. It's a small yeah. group, so why the devil would even bother a small group like you guys? Yeah. Because he knows that what you have embraced is something precious. Okay. Yeah, this is a bright uh, material kind of a message. Okay, and, and, and the, the, the result of it, you will end up to be the queen of the queen of Christ in the millennium. So you, the bride of Christ is the highest calling in God's order. Okay, higher than the Old Testament saints, higher than the Abrahamic, higher than anything that was given by God to any Old Testament prophets. No wonder our trials, maybe not physically, we're being tortured, but it's mental, it's emotional, it's financial, everything. So it is also severe. So it's not easy, you know, and it takes a lot of revelation to, to stay in this message, brothers and sisters. So I hope it's just my way of... Uh, uh, trying to insert this so that you will know. Okay, so let's go back. Let's go to the vials. 
Praise the Lord. I don't have a... I'm sorry, no, because we don't have a blackboard here. I cannot show you where this event will happen. I mean, illustration-wise. Uh, maybe I can... Okay. Can you see my two fingers? Okay. Yeah. Just look at this. For example, this is the first three and a half years of Daniel because there's seven years left for the Jews, okay? So this is the first three and a half. Okay, that is 1,260 days. And then you have the middle where the Antichrist breaks the covenant, okay? And then you have the second half, second three and a half, that is the Great Tribulation. So when will the dreadful day of the Lord happen? Right here. Right here, there is an extra time. Okay, if you read in Daniel chapter 12, the last two verses, okay, the last, just read it when you have time. There is an extra 75 days from the time that the Antichrist breaks the covenant and the ending of the Great Tribulation, you have an extra of 75 days. Okay, just read it when you have time. Okay, I will repeat. From the time that the, that the Antichrist breaks the covenant, which is the beginning of the Great Tribulation, is 1,260 days. But in Daniel chapter 12, the last two verses, you have an extra 75 days. When will the judgment of the Lord happen? When will the dreadful day of the Lord happen? In the first 30 days, because that's 75 days, in the first 30 days, that is where the dreadful day of the Lord, even the battle of Armageddon, will happen. Brothers and sisters, maybe next time we're going to talk about the battle of Armageddon because it's part of the vials. Okay, so if you think, look at the finger, if you think that this three and a half years is already terrible, wait until it's over. <laughs> Because after the great tribulation, there's another thing more dreadful than coming. Why? Because that is the day of vengeance of our time. That is the day of the Lord, the dreadful, terrible day of the Lord. Where all of this judgment will be poured upon, upon the planet Earth. The Earth will be cleansed by fire. Yeah. Turn with me first in Second Peter 3, verse Second Peter 3 verse 10 But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat both the earth and the words that are in it will be burned up by Okay, now the planet earth went through three kinds of judgment. The first judgment of the planet Earth was during the Ice Age. Okay? So the Earth was like a, a, a frozen ball in, in, in the galaxy for millions of years. Okay? So that was before Adam and Eve. That was after the fall of Lucifer. And that was the prehistoric time. Okay? That's the Ice Age. And then when man enter the picture the second judgment of the planet earth was in the flood of Noah was cleansed by water the last judgment of the planet earth will be by fire so the earth will go through three kinds of baptism ice water and fire it's almost like <laughs> repentance water baptism and baptism of the holy ghost brothers and sisters so this last judgment is going to be by fire. So the elements, not the planet Earth will explode, no, but everything that man has done will burn. Brothers and sisters, that's terrible. Hallelujah. So go with me in Revelation 16. Revelation 16, verse 1. The seven vials of the wrath of God. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Okay, go and pour out 
the poles or the bowels of the wrath of God on the earth. So the first went and poured out his bowel upon the earth, and a foul and a loathsome sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worship his image. So who will be affected by the first vial? Every individual that received the mark of the beast will be judged. It's a loathsome sore. It's like a boil. It's like wounds. Okay? That is the first vial. Parang sugat-sugat yan sa mukha, sa kabuong katawan. It's like open wounds. Brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. So the first vial is like a disease. It's like a sickness that will come upon humanity. Most especially those that have accepted the mark of the beast, the 666 mark. Alright. Verse 3. The second mouth is foul upon the sea. It became blood as of a dead man and every living creature in the sea died. Oh my God. <laughs> so every fish, if this is literal, or interpreted literally, every fish died. So there has to be a new breed of fishes in the millennium. Or if God spared some of them, then they too will have to repopulate themselves in the millennium. Brothers and sisters, so this is terrible. Hallelujah. Even now, you sometimes when you have red tide, isn't it? Fish just will be wiped ashore and they will they're all, they're all dead you can even eat them hallelujah so the second bows is judgment on uh the ocean every uh every living creature in the sea will die the fourth by a third angel poured out this bowl of the rivers the springs of water and they became blood so the source of drinking water will turn to blood that reminds you of the mosaic or the moses curse in, in when he was in egypt okay when he turned water into blood it will be repeated again brothers and sisters so how will people drink how will they survive without water if rivers turns to blood you are righteous O lord the one who is and who was and who is to be because you have judged those things for they have shed the blood of saints and prophets and you have given them blood to drink for it is their just due imagine that brothers and sisters hallelujah so god is judging everyone that is guilty of persecuting and killing God's servants. If they are alive at a particular time, they will be judged. And this is, apart from being sent to the lake of fire, this is judgment of the wicked when they are still alive. <laughs> this is terrible. Hallelujah. All right, verse 7. And I heard rather from the other saying, Even so, Lord God Almighty, True and righteous are your judgment. Verse 8. And the fourth angel poured out his ball on the sun, and the power was given to him to scorch men with fire. So the sun will increase in, in heat. Okay? Hallelujah. Men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed. Uh, the name of God was power over his plagues and they did not repent and give him glory. Hallelujah. You know, the, the, the heat of the sun will be so terrible. It probably will multiply, you know, and, and people will die of its stroke. If you go to us, I experienced that. I experienced a dry heat weather. When we went to Australia this, this time of the year, my God, the wind, when it blows in your face, it's so hot. You don't want to stay outside. You just want to stay inside. And, and most people die of heat stroke, brothers and sisters. So imagine when this arrives, this day, 
when the heat of the sun will be multiplied and man will burn because of so much heat from coming from the sun. And they blaspheme God because of that. And so nature is being used by the Almighty God to judge mankind. Okay? The ocean, the source of food, and the river, the source of water, and the sun, brothers and sisters, which is supposed to be used only for uh, the source of vitamin D3, and now it's being used by God to punish mankind by adding and multiplying uh, the heat. Okay? So verse 10, the fifth angel poured out his bowl upon the throne of the beast. So this is the judgment of uh, and his kingdom became full of darkness and they know their tongues because of the pain. They blaspheme the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and did not repent of their deeds. So the fifth uh, the fifth vial correspond to the judgment of the great four. The judgment of the Catholic Church, the judgment of the Antichrist, and all about it, brothers and sisters. Anything about Catholicism is going to be judged at this particular moment. It is under the fifth seal. It will correspond to Revelation chapter 18. Let's go there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. After this, verse 1. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority. And the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen. Is fallen. And has become a dwelling place of demons and a prison for every foul spirit in a case for every unclean and hated bird. Where is the headquarters of the beast? It's in Rome. It's in the Vatican. Yeah. That is the headquarters of the beast. And God will judge that city that reign over the kings of the earth. That is as the smallest city in the world. But it's the most powerful city in the world. In that city sits a man who control kings and potentates, brothers and sisters, the Pope. <laughs> Imagine that. Huh? The Pope has their own currency. I mean, the Vatican has their own currency. They have their own flag. They have their own ambassadors. So they operate like a tiny nation. Okay? Every American president, after elected, will go to the Vatican and kiss the ring of the Pope. Imagine that. <laughs> uh, so, and then eventually, they will be judged. Read the whole chapter 18, and that's the judgment of the great Pope, the judgment of the Roman Catholic Church. Okay, let's go back to Revelation 16, verse 12. Hallelujah. Now this bowl on the, on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. All right. The sixth seal, I mean the sixth vial, is actually paving the way for the battle of Armageddon. The kings of the east uh, is your Chinese army. So who will fight in the battle of Armageddon? NATO, that is the European uh, army, okay? Composed of the Germans, the French, okay, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization and their armies. Okay, for what? For world domination. It's the ten horns against the kings of the East, which is China. And China has approximately a hundred million soldiers. <laughs> they have the, the largest and biggest foot soldiers in the entire world. Okay? Hallelujah. Alright? And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophets. This is the satanic trinity. And this same, this 
demonic generals of Satan that anointed the false prophets, the Antichrist, and the beast system, okay, is going to be the same demonic general of Satan that will anoint these men to go into the valley of Megiddo for the battle of Armageddon. You can read that in, there is a prophecy in Hosea, okay, about the valley of Jezreel. The valley of Jezreel is where the valley of Megiddo is at. The valley of Jezreel is actually the, the bread basket of Israel. It is where they get their grain, their, their wheat, and everything. Okay, they're their staple food. It's the it's like the Nueva Isia of Israel. You know, the rice granary of the Philippines. That is the valley of Israel. And the Bible says in the book of Isaiah that the valley of Israel will become the valley of decision. Okay, it will turn to blood. Why? Because that's the place where the last land battle will be fought. It's the last land battle. Is the third world war. It's going to be short. It's not going to be long. It's going to be short. Who will win? The battle over Macedon is NATO. China will be defeated eventually. Brothers and sisters. Why did I say that? Because NATO, that still represents the beast, will fight you and I and Christ when we come down with the Lord which we will discuss next Sunday <laughs> in Revelation chapter 19, brothers and sisters. So you want to be left behind? It's up to you because this thing I'm telling you from the day, from the moment the last week of Daniel ushers in is already dark. Okay, you have the tribulation period, the great tribulation period, and then you have the 75 days extra, the dreadful day of the Lord, and the battle of our mother. My God, <laughs> it's terrible. Hallelujah. All right. She says here, uh, verse 14, for, for there are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and out of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And they gather them, gather together to the place called in Hebrew, Armageddon. So Armageddon is actually the last land battle. Praise the Lord. And it's going to be terrible, brothers and sisters. How many will die? The Bible says, let's read. Uh, let's go to maybe Revelation because this is connected with the sixth vial, the seventh, I mean, the sixth trumpet. Okay? Sixth trumpet. Okay, Revelation 16 12. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl of the great river you praise, and its water was dried up so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. Look at that, huh? and then you go with me in Revelation 9, in verse 3, it's the same. Then the sixth angel sounded, so the sixth vial and the sixth trumpet, going to the seventh trumpet, is almost the same. Okay? The sixth angel sounded, and I heard the voice from the four horns, the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, who the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river you praise. Where, are, where, where, where do you see them? In Revelation chapter 7. Do you remember? In Revelation 7, let's go. Let's go there. In Revelation 7. This is not, okay. The four angels actually hold the four winds, and that's going to be the winds of war. Okay, and they're not supposed to release that wind unless they're told by God. Okay, and they are told to lose the wind when the sixth trumpet was blown. Read with me in Revelation 7 first so that you will have an idea. 
Okay. In Revelation 7, verse 1 and 2 and 3. After these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth. That's not literal wind. That is the winds of war. You can also read the four winds in Revelation in Daniel chapter 7, verse 1. Okay? If you want to know about the four winds, read Daniel 7, 1. Okay? Holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Okay? That's the wind of war. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice, and the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea. These are angels of judgment, saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on the foreheads. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of all the children of Israel. Okay? So, they are not supposed to lose the wind. When are they going to lose the wind of war? Winds of war. When the sixth trumpet is blown. Because they are releasing and permitting the battle of Armageddon to happen. How many soldiers are going to be there? Let's see. Revelation chapter 9. <laughs> All right? All right. Let's read again. Revelation 9, 13. The sixth angel sounded, I heard the voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had a trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. Those are the four angels who are holding the four winds. Okay? So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. Oh my God. <laughs> How many will die? Third of mankind. Now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million. And I heard the number of them. 200, 200 million. And I heard the number of them. And those I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplate of fiery red. Hyacinth blue, sulfur yellow. And the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions. And out of their mouths, fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three plagues, the third of mankind was killed by the fire and the smoke. The brimstone which came out of their mouth. Hallelujah. Right? For their power is, is in their mouth and their tails, for their tails are like... So remember now, John is describing a military hardware, a military armament or a military instrument, which he has no knowledge of. He is describing it, you know, in an ancient way. Okay? So if you look at it, if fire comes out from the mouth, it's like tanks. Okay? So these are military equipment, but John has no modern way of describing it because he lived in 96 AD. So if, if John saw airplane, how do you think you would describe a, an F-16 <laughs> if we live in 96 AD? How is he going to describe a tank? How is he going to describe a, 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 a jet? How is, it, is he going to describe a missile? You know, it's like fire come down from heaven. You see? That's the only way he can describe it because there is no word available for him, you know, to describe nuclear power and military modern technology. So he's using ancient way of describing uh, this military armaments, brothers and sisters, you know, and instrumentation. Hallelujah. But the rest of mankind who were not killed by their plagues did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. Nor did they repent of their murders, of their sorcery, of their sexual immorality, or their thefts. Now, we will add more 
Let's go to Revelation chapter 14. I mean, the second harvest. Okay? If you read in Revelation 14, from verse 14 to 16, there is what you call the first harvest. Okay? Christ is seen holding a sickle, a harvest instrument. And that first harvest is the first harvest to bring souls who will die in the great tribulation. Okay? These are the souls that will be harvested, that will be killed by the Antichrist in the great tribulation. The second harvest is the harvest of the man that will die in the battle of Armageddon. And you will notice that the blood has reached the ear of a horse. That is how much blood was spilled in the battle of Armageddon. These are all under the sixth vial, sixth and seventh trumpet. Okay? Hallelujah. Actually, the seventh trumpet is announcing the coming of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, also the seven vials, or the seventh vial. Let's read the second harvest, which is man that will die in the battle of Armageddon. In 20. Then another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven. He also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar who had power over fire. And he cried with a loud cry to him who had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. So the angel thrust his sickle into the earth and gathered the, the vine of the earth and threw it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trampled outside the city and blood came out of the wine press up to the horses bridles for 1,600 furlongs. That is a description of the blood that was spilled in the battle of Armageddon and in the day of the war. Okay, so turn with me lastly in uh, Revelation 16, verse 17. The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice coming out of the throne of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake. Such a great and a mighty earthquake as had not occurred since men were on the earth. So this is also corresponding on the sixth seal. Now the three, the great city was divided into three parts. And the cities of the nations fell. And the great Babylon was remembered before God. Again, also, has something to do with the judgment of Babylon in Revelation 18. Babylon was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And then every island fled away, the mountains were not found, the great hail from heaven fell upon men. So this is a hailstone pouring out a weighing 50 kilo sheets. Imagine that. Then, and, 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 and great hail from heaven fell upon men. Each hailstone above, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Man blasphemed God. So they did not repent. Rather, they blasphemed God. So how man responded to the judgment of God was not good. It did not bring them to repentance, but the more that they hated God and blasphemed his name. Man blasphemed God because of the plague of the hills, since the plague was exceedingly great. So the whole chapter 16 of the book of Revelation, the some parts in Revelation 9, some parts in Revelation 15, is talking about the battle of Armageddon, the seven vials, the dreadful day 
of the Lord. When this COVID-19 hits the world, some uh, considered the ways and, 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 and went back to God, but some hated God. Some people are saying, if there is a God, why does he allow this thing to happen? You know, why is God allowing so much pain and so much hurt in the world? That is now how much more people's heart will be so cold when this day arrives. So sometimes when calamity strikes, it has two effects. It hardens people's heart or it softens them and they will turn and consider their ways and they turn back to God. Brothers and sisters, that is your sixth seal. Okay? That's all for now. It's not good. <laughs> These are all terrible, terrible cat catastrophe, cataclysmic event that will happen on the planet Earth. But you know what we should be thankful of? Before that they arrive, we will be raptured. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Amen? Amen. The rapture is our only hope. Or you die before that, you go to heaven. But if you live to see the day of the Lord, make sure you make it to the rapture because that's the only way that we will escape this dreadful, terrible day of the Lord. Brothers and sisters. Amen. 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 <laughs> Pastor. All right. So the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you and the Lord shine his face upon you all. And God bless you all. Amen. Pastor. Amen, amen. 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 Next amen. Sunday, the last seal, the seventh seal. Oh, hallelujah. And we're done. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Okay. Yes. So we're going to end the year with the seventh seal. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. Thanks, so. Amen. Okay. Thank you all for joining. And how. Thank you as well, Pastor. God bless you.